Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today, I am going to be surfacing Honda's NC700X DCT ABS. And this is a 2016 model, but it's really applicable for, for most years of the NC700 and the NC750, especially the DCT. That's the version we're going to be servicing today. And even most of the stuff is going to carry over to the standard transmission model, but you won't have the DCT oil filter, and you'll also have clutch adjustment on the standard version that you're not going to have on this one. Some of the systems I'm going to be going over today are the tires, the brakes, chain adjustments, uh, the, the chain slack setting. We're going to be doing a complete oil change on the bike. This is a low mileage bike, but I bought it as a used bike, so I want to make sure, you know, I don't know that the first service was done because I don't have service records with the bike. We'll also be checking over the electrical system. We'll be checking over the lights to make sure that all of that functions properly. Really, every time I service a bike, this is the same procedure that I go through. And it, it really, regardless of uh, what model bike, what make of bike, I check over these systems and just make sure that the bike is fully functioning as it should before I get out and ride it on the road. All right, let's get to work. Now that the bike is warm, I will start to drain the oil out of it. And while the oil is draining, I will remove the bolt on this side and there's one on the other side as well and then pull this cover off of the motor there is the drain bolt for the motor and it looks like a 12 millimeter bolt so we'll pull that off and start the oil draining I don't know if you can see, the oil looks fine. It's still clear. And there's no residue on the drain bolt. The crush washer looks like it's in good shape. This bike only has just over 2,000 miles on it. And probably is not due for an oil change, but I didn't have maintenance records. So it's getting an oil change. And that cover is held by the two bolts in the back and then it is pushed in through tabs here, here, and then on the other side. Now I'm going to remove the DCT clutch oil filter and it's just behind this cover. That's two eight millimeter bolts. We want to look at the oil ring here, oil seal. That looks good, it hasn't been pinched, so we can reuse that. We also want to look and see this spring goes here. And there's a detent in the oil filter where that spring goes. So you can see the rubber part goes against that and this is the clutch oil filter. So very easy to change and I'm changing it because I don't know if it's been done yet or not. And 
I'm just leaning the bike this way to drain some of that residual oil out of there. With a new clean paper towel, I'm just going to wipe out the inside. You just don't want to get any junk in here. And it's starting to rain, so I want to get this cover on here quickly. All right, this is a new part from Honda. We're just going to slide it in there. Seat it against, making sure the spring is perfectly clean. And we'll go ahead and put that in there, like that. This does not need to be over tightened here. So you want it tight, but just certainly no need to strip out anything. And that is done. That's really the only crazy service you have to do on the, the DCT is just pull this out and put the new one in. So I'm going to move everything inside here and we'll finish up the oil change in the front of the motor. Right here, underneath this coolant reservoir, we have the oil filter. And nice, I can get that off by hand. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. I'm also going to install the drain plug here, put that back on first before we put the oil filter on. Okay, looking from the kickstand side of the motor, you can see the oil drain hole here. So I wipe that clean. I'm going to go ahead and install the drain bolt. Once that's in, I'm going to wipe it down a little bit more here. And now we'll just tighten up. Good to go. Doesn't have to be overly tight. Obviously you don't want it vibrating out, but don't be a gorilla. So the Honda specifies 10W30 motorcycle oil. So I've got that here. And this is a gallon and it's going to require, with the oil and filter change, it requires 3.6 quarts. I have the oil filter sitting in the box I took the top off because of the nut on it, it doesn't stand up on its own. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and fill it with oil. And you can see it bubbling down in there. And that level will go down quite a bit. I'm going to wait a minute or so, and then I'm going to do that again. And then I will go ahead and install this on the front of the motor. So we'll let that settle for a second and it's ready to install. I'm going to take some of this clean oil and just rub it around the lip here so that I get a nice seal. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down one more time. Make sure we get a nice seal on the engine. And then I'm going to spin on the new oil filter here. Okay, that is on. I'm going to look under here, wipe down any residue, and we are ready to add oil to the engine. So I've just finished adding the 3.6 quarts of 10W30 motorcycle specific oil. So to check the oil, we just set that down in there. We don't screw it in. Turn the wheel straight, and we're going to lift the bike upright. 
and then set it back down. And the oil level is just above the high mark here. If we look at it right side up, just above the high mark, which is where it should be. When I turn the bike on, it's got to circulate more oil into the oil filter here and the DCT oil filter. So I'm going to turn it on and let it run for a couple of minutes, and then we will do our final oil level check. It's time for the final oil level check. I've let the bike run for several minutes, and then I've also let it sit for several minutes to let the oil settle down in the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this, wipe it clean, set that down in there, and then hold the bike upright. So when the oil is right at the full line. So now that the oil has changed, we will go ahead and reinstall the lower cowling here. One of the things that I do before I check the charging system is I actually install a battery tender lead on the battery and I give it a full charge overnight to make sure that it is completely up to health, everything is good to go as a starting line for testing my charging system. If the, the bike has difficulty cranking over, even after it's set all night on the tender, the battery's bad. It just needs to be replaced. But this, this bike fires right up. I don't have any worries there. Uh, we'll go ahead and che check the running voltage after the bike is warmed up. So the bike is, uh, has been warming up now. It's, it's up to temperature. All right, the voltage is exactly where we want it. It should be around 14.5 volts. I'm gonna rev the bike up a little bit. Perfect. I'm waiting right now for the fan to kick on on the cooling system to check that functionality and I can feel that it is pushing air out, so the fan is actually on. So once that turns back off again, uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, that's, that's kind of the one check here on the cooling system. With that cover removed, we can see our upper and lower coolant level. I'm gonna stand the bike upright. And, it's perfect. It is right at the upper level, which is exactly where we want it. So this is the coolant reservoir here, lower and upper. And with the bike hot, which it is, we want it at the upper level. So that's great. The next system that we are going to check here is the lights on the bike. And let's move around to the front so we can see that both of the running lights are functioning. We also see that the high beam works. We can see that the low beam works. We can see that the turn signals on that side work and on that side. I'll step around to the back and we're gonna check the turn signals there. So this is the turn signals in the back. I can also see that my running light is working here. There's the left turn signal, that works. We can see here that the license plate light works. The next thing I'm going to check is my brake lights. This is the foot brake. That works. This is the hand brake. That works. And we'll also test the horn. And that works. Moving on to the rear wheel area of the bike. We're gonna check several things while we're right here. First thing that we can do 
and this is a tread depth gauge but I'm going to use this to measure my rear brake pad thickness and that is I'm not sure if this is going to focus on it but that's right at 630 seconds so that's excellent I'm going to measure my tread depth here on the rear tire that is at 430 seconds that's excellent we're going to check the valve stems for any dry rot and on this bike you can see it is a metal valve stem right there so no need but we've looked at it I also on this bike the rear tire gets set to 42 PSI we're gonna move a little bit forward here and we can see right here the rear brake reservoir the fluid reservoir and my fluid level when I set it up right is right at the full mark which is great we're also going to inspect the rear shock and look for any signs of leakage and I've done that and and I've also ridden the bike and everything functions as it should so that looks good okay moving to the front wheel we are going to check over the front wheel and tire and make sure everything is good here so I started off by measuring the front brake pad thickness and the thickness of those is 630 seconds which is tremendous that's like new I also when I rode the bike I didn't notice any warpage the brakes functioned as they should the next thing that we're going to check here is the tire tread depth now this is a brand new tire and that is at 530 seconds in the front moving on we're going to look at the valve stem and make sure if it's a rubber valve stem that there is no dry rot however on this bike it has the metal valve stems as you can see so that's an item off the checklist and then what I'll do is just with a good tire pressure gauge check and make sure the front tire should be set at 36 psi while we're here we're also inspecting the sidewall of the tires and there is no dry rot as this is a brand new tire we're going to look at the forks and see if there is any oil residue and there's not these forks are perfectly clean so that looks great it's what I would expect the next thing we're going to do is move up to the control area of the bike and let's just start off here we're going to start off with the right side I'm going to check our brake actuation that is nice this is on uh, setting two here and you can change your settings and change where the bar where the brake lever engages I can set it a little further out on one I'll set it back on two when I rode it it felt fine so that functions like it should when I test drove the bike the brake functionality was good we're looking in there that is the brake fluid level is where it should be that's excellent the next thing we're gonna do is check our throttle play and in checking this you just want a little bit for me this is actually a little bit excessive it's just a little bit out of adjustment I'm a perfectionist so what I will do is on this front one I'm going to move that and that exposes it's got a gonna need an eight millimeter open end and a ten millimeter open end so we'll loosen the lock nut and then we're gonna twist this out just a little bit and set the adjustment so I'm gonna hold the longer shaft with the eight millimeter I'll loosen up the ten millimeter and then I'm just gonna turn this eight millimeter out a little bit Oh, that's perfect perfect tighten that back down and then I'll slide this sleeve back over just a note here if you do tighten up your throttle 
what you want to make sure of is when you turn the wheel to either side you don't want the bike to pick up revs because that could cause you to have an accident so you want to turn the bike with the bike on and in neutral turn the handlebars from side to side and make sure that the bike doesn't pick up any revs that way you can tell that your throttle isn't over tight you should have just a little bit of play here that's how I like mine set okay on the NC 700 it's a little bit different over here normally I'd be checking my clutch adjustment or clutch fluid but we don't have that this is a DCT version so I'm going to check the functionality of our e-brake and when I do that set that on I should not be able to push the bike back and forth so I've checked that and and that's good finally we're going to move into right here where you've got the clamp for your handlebar and what we want to do is just make sure that all of these nuts are torqued down so I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a a little bit of pressure there make sure that they're torqued down and the reason is you never know if somebody has turned them or you know put a different bar on or mess with them and that can be a huge safety issue if your handlebars turn while you're riding and those look great right here is a placard that has the chain tension on it and that is to be set at one and three eighths inches of free play okay if you can see that's right about at the one inch mark and right there it is right at 1.3 inches of travel well yeah but that is exactly exactly where we want it to be Okay, I have the bike up on a uh, rear swing arm stand, and what I'm going to do is just spin the tire and make sure that the chain actually looks uh, very clean. It looks like it's been regularly lubed. Uh, we're just going to add a little bit of lube to it, and we will be finished up here. I know everybody has their favorite lube, and uh, you know there, there's a lot of them out there that'll work. Uh, what I use typically is the Maxima Chain Wax. I think it does a nice job. It doesn't fling all over the wheels and fling all over the bike. And uh, I've had good success with it over the years. So this is the product that I typically use. To clean up the overspray that's gotten on my wheel, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of WD-40 on a rag and clean that while I'm in there. And we're done.